Hello everybody, as 46 here and welcome back to Stationers. In today's episode, we're going to work on solving our power issues by expanding our solar array as well as adding automated solar tracking. So it will track the solar uh, angle, uh, which is where the sun is in the sky, and it will automatically move the solar panel to face it. Okay, so... Our coal's weird, okay. Okay, I don't know why the coal was out, but okay. So what we're going to do is, we're going to start by adding some more foundations just along this way. Since the sun faces over here and it comes across the sky like that, we want the solar panels to come across here in pretty much just a straight line, so nothing will block them and we'll get the most efficiency out of them. So I think I have six solar panels total, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And of course, just so we can walk on these, we need to grab our iron sheets and weld these up. Just the uh, stage one is perfectly fine. There we go. Awesome. They're all walkable onable. Even though it's not a word, but it's now. So we have our solar panels somewhere here. That's a mining belt. There's the solar panels. So we're gonna make sure it's facing roughly the right direction. So we want um, we want the solar panel, not the one that has one input like that, we want two inputs separated. So we can have power up the top and data down the back, like that. And we're just going to place these all along here. There we go. Awesome. Um, I must have miscounted, or I got mis Okay, there's one over here still, okay. That makes more sense. So we'll grab our crowbar, get rid of the glass, we'll put it with the other glass so we don't lose it, deconstruct the solar panel, and we'll put this one right at the end. Here we go. Okay, fly back over. So we'll grab our cable coils here, drop the metal for now. So we want to connect the data side, which is this one with the uh, green on it, you can see the, oh no, that's power. This side's data, okay. We want to connect the data side, which is this side. We want to connect it with junctions so they're all touching. Because we actually need data this time around. There we go. So what this will allow us to do is it'll let us use uh, logic gates or computers to control the um, angle that it's facing. We're obviously going to use uh, the logic gates because they are much more, they have much more functionality and they cost lots of power and they're all around better. Just gotta connect all of them up and we should be good. Awesome. Okay. Almost, almost made it without failing. There we go. Okay, so now all the data is connected up. So in theory we can control all this now. The only thing we need to do is we need to connect up some logic gates. So, we'll connect up the power later, just so we don't forget, I've always forgotten about this. We'll put the actual glass in the solar panels, so they do something when they're powered by the sun. There we go. So that's a lot of solar panels, that should provide steady power all day, and it should charge enough batteries to last us all night, which is essentially what we want to do, not die off during the night. Okay. So first up, we want to start by grabbing our logic memories. So we're going to get three of these units, and we're going to rotate them like this. We'll place them in, just like this in a line like that. They can be right next to each other, it does not matter at all. But, we need to go back cabling again. We might actually want to move that closer to the actual system, just so we save on cabling. The further away it is, the more cable we have to place in between it, so it only really makes sense to have it closer. One thing is, it's important, don't have it going there and then have it connect there because the, the data doesn't go through blocks, it has to actually connect to everything individually. So we can have a um, junction here, like that. And then we want four ways all the way in between these, just so everything touches. Junction there, junction there, this can be a corner for now. Awesome. Oh, fell off again. <laughs> so, 
We have those in place. We want to do a little tower here. As long as it's not in front of these solar panels, it doesn't really matter where you place it. I'm going to place a too high tower here, like that. And then I'm going to upgrade it with the iron as well. What that will allow us to do is, it will let us place a solar sensor, which will detect which angle the sun's at and allow us to track it. So I'm pretty sure, we are, yes, we have a sensor. The only thing you have to worry about is it has to be um, facing the sun angle, if that makes sense. So if the sun comes up from this side and goes around, it has to be placed like here, like that. And it's called a daylight sensor. So we can bring the cables down from that. It's going to rotate it, there we go. Um, may want to move this pipe out of the way. There we go, okay. So we got this cable here. We do not want it to connect to the other system. So we're going to cut around it like this. And come back down. There we go. So we can cut, we can tap into here, like right there. If we cut the cabling like that, there's always flares in the way. That's the annoying thing about the early game. Okay. Connect up more cabling, and I think we've just run out of cables. So I'm going to come back in a second once I've gotten some more copper and gotten some more cabling, and then we'll continue wiring this up. Okay, guys, it's morning time almost. As you see, the sun's rising from this angle, and if we look at our daylight sensor, it's at one degrees at the moment, two degrees, it's rising. So if it says question mark, question mark, question mark degrees on your sensor, just rotate it 90 degrees around to the other side of the block, and that's all you have to do to fix it up. It took me a long time to figure that out when I first played the game, but now I obviously know it. So we can do this much easier. There we go. Just one note, it's not actually producing any power now because it's not really facing it. So if we were to rotate this, not downwards, we have to rotate all these 90 degrees, unfortunately. Wrong way, there we go. So that should start generating power. But obviously nothing's connected to the back, so it won't really do much. Which means we might want to actually grab our heavy duty cabling. Which is what you need if you have this many solar panels. And we're going to put this into a, um, a small transmitter. Transformer, sorry. Eventually. And then we can put that into a large battery and pretty much have unlimited power all night. So let's connect, connect these up. All like this. We're not going to rotate all of the solar panels, just the first one, because we might have to end up rotating them anyway, once the um, logic gates are all set up. There we go. Okay, we'll connect this, oh, fell around, fell down again. Connect it around the back this way, and see if we can put it into the APC over here. I'm thinking we have enough cabling, but we also have a massive crater here that we're going to fall into. There we go. So this is the input side of the APC, the area power controller. Get rid of that cable for now. Let's see if this connects up without blowing up. I'm pretty sure it won't blow up, but we'll see. There we go. So as you can see, it's flashing green now. I'll turn my light off. It's flashing green and blue. Blue means it's being used, green means it's being charged. So that's good. That's very, very good. Our battery's back down to medium, but this one's full, so we'll swap it out. There we go. Okay, you can see it's generating a tiny bit of power. Not much, because it's not really a good angle. Okay, let's continue with the um, circuit diagram, or the circuit construction. So we're going to grab our cables back, and we'll grab our processors. So this is what we have to do. We have to set it up in a specific way, obviously. We're going to first need the logic reader, which is not the processor after all. It's this one here, the kit I.O. So we'll need the logic reader. We'll face it around the correct way, which is this way. As you can see, it says logic reader. You can see it facing downwards. That's what we wanted. And then we need the processors here. So we're going to need a logic math, another logic math. And I believe the last thing we need is a min max. Like that, they're all facing the correct way because the text is down like that. Next thing we're going to do is essentially wire them all together. And that's as, that's as simple as putting the wires in between. So four way in between all of the middle ones like that. We'll have junctions on the edge and the corners. 
and then disconnect everything up. It's easy peasy. Kidoki. Then we're gonna do up top bit, so just rotate it around. These obviously do need power, so we have to connect power as well. Which I'll do in one second. That was a three way corner, that's not good. Ah, ah, so hard to rotate sometimes. There we go. Okay, this is not connected to power, but we can make it connected to power if we come over this way. Oop. We probably need more cabling. There we go. So this is all power connected here. So if we cut this bit here and come with a junction like this junction and then we connect it up it will grab power from the system and it should work change this cut, uh, corner to a junction there we go awesome 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 hard to rotate that's all I can say oh we had it there we go awesome so now if we go over to these chips we should be able to press the big red button and it should start flashing it's an error obviously we haven't programmed them yet so it wouldn't make sense if it wasn't an error and I'm pretty sure it's all wired up correctly, or at least correctly enough for our purposes. We can now grab our screwdriver out, and we can start setting the logic chips up. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to set the memory values. So the first one up top, this one here, this has to be a 15. So if you press these, it obviously goes up by 100s. If you hold left out, it'll go up by 10s. And if you click on these small buttons here, it'll go up by 1s. And if you hold out, it'll go up by 0.1s, obviously. So we'll set this to 15. This one can be one and a half. There we go. And the final one, I believe, is 10 as well. Sorry, 100, sorry. Um, so that's just as simple as clicking it once. There we go. One thing we might want to do is come over to our crates over here. And I'm not sure which crate it is. It's this one here, actually, the labeler. So we'll grab the labeler, the labeler, not the labeler, the labeler. And we'll name these uh, memory chips what they are. So you simply have to turn it on with the OK. This is the 15 memory. If you can see it says 15 on it. So we'll name that one 15. This one is 1.5. And finally this one's memory 100. Okay, that'll just make it easier once we're actually selecting the chips later from these. So the first thing is the logic reader. This is going to read the solar angle. So it has the input here we have to select the solar um where is it should be called the sensor i think daylight sensor we went past it god damn it gonna go all the way right back around i wish there was a back button there we go so now we can act we can choose the variable and there's like three different ones we want the solar angle so that will detect the angle if you can see it's at zero we turn it on at 123 degrees, it's changing constantly, which is amazing. Okay, the next thing is the math unit, the first math unit. We want that to be the first memory unit. Um, the first memory unit is the second variable, which is memory 15. There we go. This one, the input for the number one, will be the logic reader, this thing here. And the output variable will be, of course, subtract. Okay, moving on to the next chip. It's starting to get a bit more advanced, but it's nothing we can't handle. So the next chip is going to be the memory 1.5 here. This one will be the previous math unit, and this one will be divide. So let's go ahead and select that. Memory 1.5. This should just be math unit, since there's only one on this system. And this one will be divide. There it is. And then this is the min slash max unit. So we're going to select the memory 100 for the variable 2. There we go. For the next variable, the variable 1, we want the variable 1 to be the math unit 2, which is where we might want to actually label something. So, turn this, bad, turn this bad boy on. Math unit 2, this way we won't get confused and choose the wrong one. So, oh, got stuck. There we go, math unit 2. There we go. And then for this middle operation, we want less. One more thing I forgot to add was the kit I.O. We needed one more kit I.O. at the end. And that's of course the batch writer. What this will do is it will write to every single solar panel on the network instead of just one at a time. 
So we're going to grab our cables again and just hook this in. My bad guys, sorry about that one. Okay, I'll drop these cables, put them in a pile and connect a four-way junction in between. There we go. Okay. There we go. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, get the final corners and we should be good to go. There we go, sweet. So we'll go back screwdriver again. And this is the final chip we have to do, I'm pretty sure. So the first input is going to be, of course, the result of this one, because it's the end of the line. And then we're going to change the output to be solar panel, and the output variable will be the vertical angle. So that's a logic min max. We want it, I'll turn my flashlight on. We want the output to go to the solar panel, and we want to change the vertical. So, the angle is 177, it's a question mark now because it's obviously sunset. This should be working once we turn all these chips on. There we go. You can see the solar panel is moving by itself, that's a pretty good sign. They're all moving but they're also on the wrong axes. You can see obviously the sun doesn't come up from this side. So what we need to do now is of course rotate these 90 degrees. Um, so we're going to go up here with the jetpack, rotate right 90 degrees, not left. There we go. Okay, dokey. It's just a matter of selecting them all, it takes a little bit of time, but it will be well worth it once we have steady power gen. There we go, and the last one. Just to note, it might be a completely wrong um, angle once day come, daytime comes up because it's a question mark angle at the moment. We don't really know which angle it needs because it could um, spin around the other way when the sun actually comes up. So we'll wait till morning and see what happens. Okay guys, it's now morning time and it's just as I feared. The solar panels are all around the wrong way. So we just have to rotate it back to 180 and then it should work, I believe. No, not 180. We could go to 270. There we go. Okay, it's just, it's better if you do this during the daytime when you first set it up, that way you don't make this initial mistake. Oop, too far. It's also kind of hard because there's no uh, platform to stand on, you have to kind of get up here with it. Rotate that around to 270. There we go. Come around the back way for these ones. 280, whoops. And the final one, 270. Again, I went too far. I'm just, I'm just bad at this. Okay, guys, you can see if we hover over this one, 493 watts, and it's sticking at 493, roughly. It, it um, oscillates between 492 and 493, or thereabouts, anyway. But it's going to follow it all day long. So if you have a look at this really closely, you can see it um, jumping pixel by pixel, and it's following the sun perfectly. So now our battery will last all night long because it'll be obviously fully charged. We have all this power coming in, it's amazing. What we want to do eventually is upgrade it to a actual large battery that will take up this whole square, because it's that big. And then that will charge up and it'll last a long time compared to just a normal battery, like a D battery, which is really kind of pathetic. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Next episode, we'll continue expanding the base, continue working on it, making it much nicer. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you'd like to, make sure you check out our Discord channel. And if you're new to the channel and like what you see, hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.